The illusionists. The stage illusionists. Their last great golden age came to an end with the last great days of the stage among magicians. There were giants in those days. That was when theater was. Theater still be glamoured and a dazzle with theatricality. By way of homage to those grand old wonder workers, we're going to recreate for you a few moments of illusion in the high old style. Only the tricks will be new. Do you believe in magic? Well, you do believe your eyes, don't you? And our cameras do not lie, really. They're seeing what you see without the slightest hint of technological trickery. Sidearm snookery, hanky-panky, or ranny gazoo. Directing your attention, then, to this. A cabinet of glass. What you are looking at is nothing less than the crystal casket of King Cosroy's. That is, if you believe in magicians. We like to claim that our illusions come to you from the mysterious east. This, for example, was first seen in ancient Persia, in Ishbahan, some seven centuries ago. A casket. Perfectly transparent and containing, as you see, an absolute totality of nothingness. Isn't that wonderful? Where in the world was this lady ten seconds ago? <laughs> Not in this world. For 700 years, two months, three weeks, five minutes, and it's now 16 seconds? Each delectable morsel of this maiden has been so minutely dispersed as to remain invisible. In the ambient air, ladies and gentlemen, her name is Laila. And now Laila's parts have all been put together and very much in the right places too. Watch closely and before your eyes what started 700 years ago will come to its climax a hundred years in the future in the 21st century. In outer space Absolute silence, as the slightest noise might prove fatal to the young lady.
can't endure it for much longer. With the speed of light, Laila was transported through a time warp from the ancient past. Time now for her return. Directing your attention to an improbability in the future tense. You have witnessed a materialization, a penetration, and now, vaporization. Evaporation. There was a time, you know, in this land of ours when every whistle stop had a real life theater of its own. We take you back now for a moment to those grand old days when we magicians did our stuff in gilded palaces, sumptuously upholstered in scarlet plush and purple hokum. He was billed as the uh, Arabian Enigma or uh, Khan the Great or the Great Khan or more simply Abu Khan. Touring the country, as all the big illusionists used to, he, he was bound to encounter sometimes the odd element of hostility in his audience, especially on a rowdy Saturday night.
And you know, when somebody got really out of hand, he'd lead him firmly up on the stage, announcing to the rest of the audience that he would cast an instant spell upon him and place him in a deep, hypnotic trance. And Abu Khan, standing him against the curtain, would accept the challenge. I will merely count to three, he'd say, and on the third count, you, sir, will be deeply, deeply asleep. One. Two. Three. Well, it never failed. From the shadows of the pyramids in the third dynasty. The unfathomable antiquity of ancient Egypt. The legend of the mummy's curse. Hatepfa, princess of the Nile, daughter of the pharaoh, Radames III, fell on an evil day under the displeasure of the high priests. And these, laying hold upon her person, cast her into a sarcophagus, bolting her limbs with cruel greaves and shutting her away from human sight in a gilded mummy case. Then it was that the executioners brought forth from the torture chambers the dread instruments of ritual sacrifice, the great sword-sharp axe blades whose lightest whisper is deadlier than the cobra's fang. These being positioned upon a command, were driven through the princess, through her body, twice and thrice, dividing her at the waist and at the neck. And if you believe that, you believe anything. <laughs> of course you don't, do you? You know perfectly well that I haven't murdered the young lady, have I? Why, scarcely an inch of tempered steel is separating her body from her head. According to the legend, a kindly wizard cast a spell on her, and in such wise that the death axes slicing through her grew, as you see, no single tear, no single drop of blood. How is it done? How is it that the lady lives still and breathes still, partitioned as she is now, into three separate and distinct compartments? Magic. So powerful was that enchantment that in the dark of the moon, the grave robbers, and here they come. <laughs> Those verminous jackals breaking into the center of the mummy case. And lo, what did they find? Nothing. The largest of the three portions of the princess had simply vanished. Princess, to your corporeal entirety. The uh, name of that illusion, just for the record, is the disembodied princess. And that box we use, the mummy case itself, was first brought to this country by that incomparable conjurer, Howard Thurston. 
And the original princess who was uh, disembodied in it was, uh, just for the record, and of all things, the mother of Sid Caesar's delightful comedy partner, Imogene Coco. Oh, stage illusions. These things are handed down from one illusionist to another, from one generation to the next. Our mummy case has been around the world I don't know how many times. After Thurston's retirement, it turned up south of the border in the Mexican magic show of a Chinese magician named Bamberg. Bamberg, who was Dutch, was born in England, raised in Brooklyn, and called himself Fu Manchu. His father, who also pretended to be Chinese, built himself under the Japanese name of Okito and was, in fact, the official court magician to the Queen of Holland. The Bambergs were a royal family in themselves, a, a magical dynasty whose founding father was a wooden-legged wonder worker way back in the 17th century. In this century, there was another famous Chinese magician, Chingling Su. He made a sensation with a bullet-catching trick. That's the one where some spectator from the audience is invited to fire live ammunition at you and you catch the bullet in your teeth. It really killed the people. It also killed Chingling Su. I mean, it really did, right on stage during a performance. An accident, a sensational form of suicide, or was it murder? The world will never know. It was only during the police autopsy when the fake pigtail came loose that the world discovered that he wasn't Chinese at all, that Chingling Su was actually an American named Robinson. And there's a whole string of unhappy wizards who came to grief during that bullet-catching business. In a gaslit Opry house in the wild and woolly west, there was one conjurer who, having nipped the bullet neatly in his teeth, turned to take his bow, at which an indignant cowhand stood up in the audience, drew his own handgun, and shouting, Let's see you catch this one, you... took aim at the magician and shot him dead. Ladies and gentlemen, kind friends and gentle hearts, all this is really true. Chung, or Robinson, was known to be a fiercely jealous husband who said his wife had driven him to desperation. But could he have planned to die like that in the middle of his most famous trick of public suicide, or was it murder? Cameras would move again to our committee of experts. They've signed a deposition. Would you show it, please? Uh, testifying to the condition of the gun, which they have submitted to the most painstaking and minute examination. Likewise, the death bullet with which it would be loaded. And now, may I draw your attention to the fact that I've been given no opportunity whatsoever to tamper with the gun or with the ammunition. At no time tonight will I so much as touch them. The death bullet, which will be fired in this studio, is genuine. Uh, you gentlemen agree that the bullet is, as you've stated in your notarized deposition, very much the real thing. That's right. <laughs> Good. And you'll also notice, ladies and gentlemen, that conditions here are uh, very different than they were in London half a century ago. And actually, more dangerous. Our bullet and our gun, as you see, are perfectly genuine. With Chung, they were tricked with died all the same, as did many other magicians. And what have we done here? I mean, where are we? By eliminating mechanical dangers, by doing away with all trickery, I'll tell you where we are. We're left with a far deadlier uncertainty of pure luck. Ready. Touched it. And of course, there's no way in the world that you could know which are the blank cartridges. As for the real bullet, of course, neither one of us knows just where it is right now in the revolver. You see the 
target. Between your first shot and the last, I will attempt to ascertain by divination the moment when you come to the death bullet. When I give you the warning, please aim at the target. You can begin. Fire! If you want to, you can give that thing just one more spin. I'm just going to shoot. Target! 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 Thurston, our greatest magician, traveled across India offering a purse of gold to anyone who could perform a certain feat of magic, which through the centuries has become rather more of a rumor than a fact. Thurston never saw the trick, and for the first time I can tell you why. Thurston was looking in the wrong direction. Up. Under his nose, in the streets of Benares, the marvel he was seeking was being performed by that notable Swami, Ali Ben Bey. Ali, an abominable old man of uh, 92, passed on the secret to me in exchange uh, for the hand of my youngest daughter in marriage. That is, he passed on most of the trick. He certainly passed on my daughter, who's no mean sorceress herself put the whammy on the dirty old wonder worker and uh, if there is a heaven for magicians I hope by now he will have explained to Mr. Thurston that he missed the trick because of a faulty translation in Hindustani Goomba does not mean rope thus the legendary Indian rope trick is in fact the Indian thread trick uh, now, if this was a bundle of rope instead of little pieces of thread, trickery would be possible. The uh, tiny broken pieces of thread are, I hope, yes, clinging nicely to the shorter piece. But since I don't know how the trick works, I can only pray that old Ollie will send us now a whiff of wizardry out of the skies. Sometimes it's illusion, delusion. Sometimes when we're very lucky on rare occasions, it is magic. Ladies and gentlemen, I must ask for absolute silence, as the slightest noise might prove fatal to the young lady.
In the future tense, you have witnessed a materialization, a penetration, and now, vaporization. Evaporation. the country as all the big illusionists used to. He, he was bound to encounter sometimes the odd element of hostility in his audience, especially on a rowdy Saturday night. And when somebody got really out of hand, he'd lead him firmly up on the stage, announcing to the rest of the audience that he would cast an instant spell upon him and place him in a deep, hypnotic trance. And Abu Khan, standing him against the curtain, would accept the challenge. I will merely count to three, he'd say, and on the third count, you, sir, will be deeply, deeply asleep. One, two, three. There was a time, you know, in this land of ours when every whistle stop had a real life theater of its own. We take you back now for a moment to those grand old days when we magicians did our stuff in gilded palaces, sumptuously upholstered in scarlet plush and purple hokum. He was billed as the uh, Arabian Enigma or uh, Khan the Great or the Great Khan or more simply Abu Khan.
The illusionists, the stage illusionists, their last great golden age came to an end with the last great days of the stage among magicians. There were giants in those days. That was when theater was. Theater still be glamored and a dazzle with theatricality. By way of homage to those grand old wonder workers, we're going to recreate for you a few moments of illusion in the high old style. Only the tricks will be new. Do you believe in magic? Well, you do believe your eyes, don't you? And our cameras do not lie, really. They're seeing what you see without the slightest hint of technological trickery, sidearm snookery, hanky-panky, or ranny gazoo. Directing your attention, then, to this. A cabinet of glass. What you are looking at is nothing less than the crystal casket of King Cosroy's. That is, if you believe magicians, we like to claim that our illusions come to you from the mysterious East. This, for example, was first seen in ancient Persia, in Ishbahan, some seven centuries ago. A casket. Perfectly transparent and containing, as you see, an absolute totality of nothingness. Isn't that wonderful? Where in the world was this lady ten seconds ago? <laughs> Not in this world. For 700 years, two months, three weeks, five minutes, and it's now 16 seconds? Each delectable morsel of this maiden has been so minutely dispersed as to remain invisible. In the ambient air, ladies and gentlemen, her name is Laila. And now Laila's parts have all been put together and very much in the right places too. Watch closely and before your eyes what started 700 years ago will come to its climax a hundred years in the future in the 21st century. In outer space